Hello, and welcome to this lecture on what is GIS. If you are taking this class, you may already have some idea as to what the acronym GIS stands for or what GIS is used for. Today, we will go into more depth about what GIS is and does, and by the end of this lecture, you will be able to define GIS and understand how GIS displays maps through layers of data. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. These are computer-based systems that are designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage, and display all sorts of geographic data. As their name suggests, GIS are information systems, or networks of hardware and software, that are used by people and organizations all over the world to collect, create, process, and distribute data. What sets geographic information systems, or GIS, apart from other types of information systems is the term geography. Geographic information systems specifically handle data that are geographic, meaning the data are referenced to locations on Earth. The term geography literally means describing the Earth, and we often use the term spatial alongside the terms geography or geographic to describe these data sets since they occur across space. Intuitively, we can think of GIS as a map with data behind it. Coupled with the spatial data we view as a map, GIS data files often include tabular data known as attributes that are stored in an attribute table. Attribute data can generally be defined as additional information about each of the spatial features. An example of a map with data behind it would be this map of the United States with an associated data table that might include information such as the state name, land area, population, and other fields. It is the ability to link these two components, the map and the data behind the map, that makes GIS such a powerful and effective problem-solving tool. Another way to think about GIS is that it addresses two questions, where and what. Geographic information systems address both of these questions in ways that other types of information systems simply are not able to do. First, they store the locations of features on Earth, such as trees, rivers, or fire hydrants, that can be referenced to a specific location through coordinates. These features comprise the map, or in other words, the where. GIS also stores attributes or data that might be associated with those features, such as the type of tree, the name of the river, or the number of connections on each fire hydrant. These data represent the what. Together, these two questions, or the what and the where, allow us to explore our world in ways that are simply not possible with other data streams. Now, since we are on the topic of maps, let's take a look at how maps are constructed in GIS. Maps in GIS are composed of a series of layers that are drawn in a particular order. Each layer represents a different set of geographic data, and the layers are ordered in such a way that the information can be visualized together. The layers can be analyzed together to determine what features are inside a particular region or how close a certain feature is to another feature. For example, the map shown here includes layers for the active gas and oil wells, which are symbolized as points, along with the historic production boundary, which is symbolized in the red shading. All of these layers have been ordered on top of an aerial photograph, which shows details of the surrounding neighborhoods. Later on, we will learn how to query or ask questions of the different data sets to answer questions such as which wells are outside the historic production boundary or what percentage of the administrative boundary is currently being mined. So to recap, in this video, we defined GIS as a computer-based system designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage, and display geographic data. 
Or in other words, a GIS is a map with the data behind it. GIS helps us answer two questions together, where and what, which makes GIS a powerful tool for exploring our world. Lastly, maps in GIS are composed of multiple layers of data, ordered and symbolized so that the information can be visualized and ultimately analyzed together. In part two of this lecture on defining GIS, we will discuss the different components of GIS in more detail. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.